Hello and welcome to episode nine of Inside the Stage Door. Today's guest is filmmaker, writer, producer, director, best director of the LA Film Awards and best LGBTQIA plus film awards. Please welcome to Inside the Stage Door, Matthew Mayo McKay. Welcome, Matthew. Hi, thanks for having me. Mate, I'm just going to start with a, a few quotes, if I could, uh, in relation to your recent film, Tooth for Tooth. Chilling from the first frame, an electric terror tale, stylish, provocative and creepy. Tooth for Tooth is a neon-drenched, blood-soaked slice of queer horror. Jennifer's body, the leftovers and serial mum had an Australian baby. What go- Compared to that, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty honoured, really. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it, so yeah. Fantastic, yeah. So the, the first quote was from Carrie Dragshaw, well-known drag queen, I believe. Yeah, yeah, drag queen journalist. Yeah, fantastic. Congratulations, Matthew. You've you've directed, uh, written, and produced titles such as Book Club, Bestia, Smothered, A Tale of the Laundry Game, Love and Blood, and the recently acclaimed Vampire Drag Short Tooth for Tooth. And you're only fifteen, is that right? Yeah, 15 turns 16 next month. Fantastic. Um, how, how long have you been a filmmaker for? Um, I, well, I consider kind of my first kind of film that I was really proud of as A Tale of the Laundry Game. But um, I started doing like animations and kind of stuff when I was about 12-ish. So, yeah. Right. And, and how did you get into animation and, and, and therefore filmmaking? Well, when I was younger, I just liked really liked writing. So I wanted to be an author when I grew up. And then I kind of started seeing those ideas um, formed like films and I wanted to write scripts and then obviously when I was younger I didn't have like the resources available to create films with actors and everything you know that takes a lot so I just thought to start I kind of thought animation I can record actors over voiceovers and just kind of do everything myself which is a lot easier to start with. Awesome I was wondering how do you manage and prioritize your your school duties with your with your passion of filmmaking? Well I guess to me film is always going to be more important I mean school i have to do it. it's a necessity i mean uh yeah but I, I always prioritize film over that okay right for example if you've got a big exam coming up but you've got a a shoot that has a deadline how would you prioritize that take the shoot yeah the shoot first okay yeah, awesome hopefully first. you have understanding teachers yeah mostly it's been pretty good and clearly you have understanding parents they're they're clearly very supportive of you and your endeavors yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Matthew, you've written a number of projects, I believe, with um, Benjamin Pyle Robinson. Um, could you just explain for our viewers what your writing process is with with Benjamin? So I usually kind of have an idea or some characters in mind that I kind of want to tell a story with, and then we'll kind of brainstorm. You might have some more ideas, or kind of expand on those characters, and then I guess sometimes I'll send my plot and scene breakdowns and then he'll kind of turn that into a script format and we'll kind of go back and forth until we're happy. Um, and other times he'll come up with a plot and I'll do the characters and we'll kind of edit it together. And then, yeah, that's how we kind of write together. Okay, cool. And and do you believe in, in do you storyboard? Do you put up little cards on your wall like other writers do and say, this is scene one and uh, let me move scene one over here and that sort of thing? I don't personally storyboard. I don't, I don't think Ben does either. It's kind of more, a bit of a messy way to do it. Just kind of get a pages document or notes up and then just kind of write what's in your head. And then if that makes sense, we can rearrange it later on and see what kind of best fits the script we're going to tell. Yeah, right. Um, and how, how many drafts would you go through before you're happy with a, a screenplay? I think with Tell the Laundry Game, I think we did three or four until the final. Um, I think with Tooth the Tooth, we kind of kind of did it in stages. We didn't have the finished one first, so we had like kind of without the ending, and then we changed the ending a couple of times, and then it's different again when we actually shot it. So I think about three drafts with that as well. Right, and and does the story change again when you get on set? Um, do ideas change with, with with ideas actors might come up with for you? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a collaboration with the actors and what ideas they have as well. It's also if something doesn't go right on set, or you know, this actor pulls out, or you know, we can't shoot that scene or we don't have access to the location anymore. It's kind of got to be adaptable as well. So there's all those things that might change. Yeah, right. 
Okay, cool. Thanks, mate. Um, speaking of um, A Tale of the Laundry Game, could you just explain um, how you attained the rights to adapt that uh, Stephen King short, short story? Yeah, so then I saw it in the news a couple of times about other filmmakers in America had done it. And then I kind of looked into it myself. I saw on his website an application form and I hadn't really done too much filmmaking at that point. And I thought it would be kind of a good way to get into it, especially for like my first kind of real short. And then so I just applied. I sent like my ideas and what I had for the short. And then, yeah, the contract was sent back and then that's kind of how it started. Right. Okay. And um, has, has Stephen King seen your, your film? I mean, I, I, I don't know if he has, but I think um, in the contract we have to send a copy to his address, so... Right. Congratulations, it's a really good film, very enjoyable. Matthew, you've you've managed to work with some pretty big names in your 15 years. Um, Drew Drogue, Phil Nickel, Lucy Barnett, Brennan Murray, and I, I believe um, Eddie Perfect um, soon. H- how did you manage to, to get them on board your projects? I think um, I'd all seen some of their work previously, and especially with some of them, it was when I was doing my animation, so they, I just reached out and kind of gave them the pitch and who I was and I was lucky enough that they were very supportive. They're happy to send in voiceover work if they were in America or different parts of Australia. Yeah. They were just really supportive of me and the script, especially with Drew and Phil. They did Tooth for Tooth, um, Love and Blood. And so they're able to kind of see how I progressed as a filmmaker as well. Right. Okay. So just a case of reaching out to them and, and, being lucky enough to to get them on board, I suppose. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of Tooth for Tooth, you've also recently acquired worldwide distribution deal for Tooth for Tooth through um, uh, Mattioli Productions. How how did that come about? They reached out a couple months ago, um, just asking about the film. And then from then onwards, we kind of discussed, you know, they, they seemed like a really good fit to distribute the film. And I saw some of their other work, which I quite enjoyed. And... Yeah, I'm really grateful to be with them. You know, it's a it's a good first deal, I think, and hopefully he'll get seen by some people. What is it exactly about these particular hate crimes that make them different? It's not safe. There's a ritualistic element to them that has historical relevance. You can never be angels until you kill devils. Bodies drained of blood. Very recently, we've seen great social change. The old powers of superstition and control through fear had just begun to break down, but now they're fighting back with great fear. Get on your knees and break the body, Lord, for forgiveness! I think we're entering another age of hate. To feel the power. And there are those who thrive in such times. It's very exciting. Uh, Matthew, what do you like more, directing or writing? Uh, I always like creating an idea. Um, I, I, I like directing a lot and kind of like allowing my vision to come to life, but I find directing is a lot more stressful. You know, it's kind of, especially when it's independent filmmaking, you've got to be more allow for stuff to change. And whereas writing, you can kind of sit back and if you give it and have that stress, you can just kind of... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, I like both. I can't really choose one because something, and I want to, I want to come I, I guess, um, yeah, interesting. It's a very, more things, more things could go wrong. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of group work as well, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I'd also like to direct other people's work as well. So I guess in that regard, I'd say directing because, you know, you can kind of tell other stories as well as your own and kind of, it's a lot more group work, which I like as well. So yeah, yeah, right. And and what's what's your favorite favorite thing about filmmaking? I guess kind of telling different stories in different ways as well, and kind of reaching different audiences. So like, I mean, Tooth to Tooth, 
it's kind of, I kind of got inspired by a lot of the eighties kind of vampire films, but um, I also kind of re-embedded that kind of political themes um, and drag of course as well, which is, you know, kind of, so it's like, it looks like a horror film at face value, but when you actually look into it and watch the film, it's kind of, you know, it kind of, I mean, not so subtly, but um, teaches the audience about things and is a bit of a social commentary as well. So I like being able to kind of mix different genres and allowing them to have different impacts on audiences, maybe even sometimes educating them on issues as well. Yeah, right. So um, what was The Lost Boys an influence on Tooth for Tooth for you? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, Joel Schumacher was a big influence on that film, especially with the lighting kind of colouring scheme we went through. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I was wondering, um, as a filmmaker, wh- where would you see yourself in 10 years' time? Well, I, I hope to have at least one one or two features done by then. Um, yeah. Hopefully, probably bigger budget. I'd love to work with bigger budgets, you know, have stuff that's being funded rather, rather kind of move out of that independent world. Um, I'd also love to write for Neighbours, um, so kind of do some writing that isn't for my own work, but write for different television series or yeah, Australian sure. projects as well as kind of focus on my own films and stuff. Yeah. Can I ask why Neighbours? I, I just, I mean, it's not necessarily held in Australia anymore as a classic, but, you know, in the 80s with Kylie and Jason, yeah. um, it's kind of a big cultural impact and, you know, the fact that um, London, it's highly regarded and yes. um, even in some of the Nordic countries, you know, like 50% of the population watch it there. So, and I mean, it's a soap definitely, but also they kind of do, they've moved on with the times, you know, they have different social issues they cover. Um, yeah, I just think it's an interesting show and very relevant. So, yeah. Yeah, right. Cool. Thank you, mate. Um, now, before coronavirus, I believe you were due to fly to LA and work on a film. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So, I think they've done most of the shooting now. Um, it's called Isaac with um, Dove Cameron and RJ Mitty from Breaking Bad. Um, I was supposed to shadow the director there and help out on set. So, yeah. That's, um, it's, it's exciting, but it's disappointing, I guess, that you didn't, you didn't get over there. Yeah, it is disappointing. I mean, I'm lucky I'm safe in Adelaide, but um, yeah, I mean, there'll be more opportunities in the future like that. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I hope you, I hope you get over there very soon. Um, Matthew, would you say that your films so far um, have a theme or a through line? I, I don't think a theme, but I mean, from now on, I mean, since Tooth for Tooth, I mean, even Love and Blood, I, I definitely want to make sure that each film has a message or kind of takeaway or even a bit of a social commentary as well as, you know, being a genre film or something. I mean, I started with the Tale of Laundry Game, that's an adaptation, but it doesn't really say anything or comment on anything kind of that the audience can take away. It's more of a drama without anything um, yeah. more social, I would say. And I, moving forward, those shorts that I've written at the moment that I'm working on all have kind of themes or different social commentaries that I want to show to the audiences yeah right is and and is is film a, an excellent way to be educated as an audience member i, I think so because some people are more open so they're not going to say they don't want to read an article or they don't want to watch a documentary or listen to a person speak but when they're watching a the film hopefully they not only enjoy it but they can also get something from what they did think you know especially um with horror films you know it hasn't always been as progressive audiences so if you can put your message in there and they see it and they're like, oh, it's just a horror film. But then actually they realise it's something more and perhaps they see those people as different groups, as different issues in a different light because of that film. Thank you. Who, who are your main influences as a filmmaker? I, I can't say I have like a top influence. I mean, Josh Schumacher is definitely one of my favourite directors with St. Elmo's Fire, um, Lost Boys is a classic. Um, but I, I have to say I'm pretty eclectic when it comes to genres and films. Um, kind of open to watching anything and you know if I enjoy it I enjoy it if I don't I don't but I think even bad films you can always learn, learn something from that so yeah right yeah well Joel Schumacher is certainly a, a huge giant in the film industry and um, sadly passed away recently but he's left a, an amazing legacy and um, what's your favorite film 
Um, I have two currently. Um, one is Assassination Nation, um, which came out in 2017, I believe. And the other is Bit, which came out this year. Um, Assassination Nation is kind of this thriller, social media kind of commentary. It's quite political. It's the same director and creator as Euphoria, the HBO series. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend checking that one out. And Bit is an uh, independent vampire film that is not too, it's, it's very reminiscent of 80s films, but also has like a slight undertone of politics and social commentary and a feminist kind of vampire film, which is different. Yeah. So. Right. And is it the social commentary that makes it one of your favourites? Um, yeah. I mean, they're both social commentaries. One's quite, Assassination Nation is like taking it to the very extreme and it's quite in your face and, and brutal, while this bit is more subtle and kind of you can enjoy it as just, a horror film and just a fun flick as well as what it is. But um, yeah, they both have interesting different social commentaries that I think are very relevant to today's political climate. Yeah, right. And Matthew, do you have a, an interest in, in early Hollywood films? Is that, is that part of your, your, your film knowledge? I, I, I can't say I've seen a lot of them, but I mean, I certainly like the old ones like Sunset Boulevard. That's a, yeah, I love that one. Um, Phantom of the Opera, the original, kind of all those original monster films as well, like Frankenstein, Dracula, the old Hollywood monster films that I think I quite enjoy. So, And um, are, you, are you familiar with a lot of Hitchcock's work? I, I am. I've seen Psycho, Rope, Real Window, a couple of like, birds. I guess I've seen all his big ones and a couple of his small ones as well. Thank you. And uh, do you have an interest in doing, say, a musical in the future on film? similar to what Ma- what Baz Luhrmann is doing at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I definitely love to do a musical. I had one kind of that um, we'd written, we got the songs for, but um, it just fell through because of budget constraints. I mean, I, I would definitely 100% love to do one, but it is quite a bigger task to take on. You've got to organise like choreography and then the music on top of that, as well as just filming the regular kind of scenes. So yeah, definitely in the future, yeah. Thank you, Matthew. How how important is it for us as Australians to tell our own stories and to to view our own stories on the on the big screen? I, th- I think it's very important. I don't think it's being done a lot right now. I mean, um, I think Australian films often the government doesn't really fund anything genre or anything that they want to take risks with. So we saw a lot of the same kind of work, like Shane Jacobson kind of family comedies. They're easy and cheap to produce and. I generally make their money back, but I think um, a lot of more independent work is, is being seen. Um, a couple of films coming out, which are more interesting, more independent, um, I think are more realistic stories as well. Whereas classically, we haven't got that range of genres, range of um, storytelling in Australia. Thank you, mate. So this, this is a question which I've been asking a lot of guests, and I'll ask you, um, why... Why are the arts, and particularly filmmaking, important to society? Uh, that's a big question. Um, a lot of different reasons. I guess there's the main one being enjoyment value. You know, it's an it's a outlet. It's a way to kind of not only entertain, but you can educate. It's just it's kind of pivotal, really, to the, the world. I mean, every country kind of has their own entertainment. You know, it's not always the same, but there's... So sports, there's arts and kind of, even if they're different, you kind of, they're both needed in the world. Yeah. I guess they'd be, they'd be needed now more than ever. Yeah. With, um, with stage three restrictions in place in South Australia, are you, are you able to, to do any filmmaking at the moment? Yeah, I am. So I'm working on, on my uh, anthology feature, which I'm working on the first two parts now. Um, so I'm lucky that Adelaide hasn't, really had any issues at the moment with being able to film. I mean, I can't do any large group scenes at the moment, but working with smaller casts and crew, I can definitely still do that, which is good. Right. Okay. So clearly um, posing some challenges for you for the cast and crew on set. Um, I mean, I mean, it did at the start with restrictions. I think there's more now, but um, I'm lucky that they've been like, kind of focused on a smaller cast anyway, so I don't have to worry too much. Excellent. Um, and once uh, once restrictions have been completely lifted, um, what's the first thing you're going to do that you can't do now? 
um, I'm not sure really. I mean, cinemas will be good when they're open. I mean, they are open now, but there's not a lot playing. So, you know, I, I really want to do a screening for Tooth for Tooth as well, which I haven't been able to do. So hopefully in the next few months, everything clears up and we can kind of do a screening for that. Yeah, able to get to a I yeah, I, Devil Wears Prada, which is an old one. Um, I saw Love Sarah. I saw Birds of Prey. Um, I think I saw something else, but that slips me for now. Yeah, cool. Um, and um, after you finish your current project, what's what's next for you? Um, well, I'm not I'm not too sure. So my current project is it's an anthology made up of four different short films that kind of connect um, all social commentaries and kind of about toxic and uh, the society. Um, so I mean, that's a big project. I think it's about 70 to 80 minutes. And I'm filming the first two parts at the moment, which is a lot of work. So, I mean, I've definitely got a couple of other ideas for short films and, and things like that, but hopefully the feature... I get distribution and kind of hopefully that kind of takes things to bigger levels. Awesome. Matthew, thank you so much for your answers and for your insight. Um, I wish I was as driven at 15 years old as you are now. Um, I take my hat off to you. Thank you for your time, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You've been watching Inside the Stage Door. I've been James McCluskey-Garcia from Reading Companions Australia. I'd like to thank our regular contributors to this episode, Tepi Films, Ipskit Productions, All Pro Audio, Tempo for Two Productions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to like and share our page for upcoming guests.